Just one more time. I mean, we just just one more time because I want to sing this to the guy that made this. He's in the <laughs> chat. Adam, you join whenever you want to join. There's, there's, this is all very chilled. This is for you. We dedicate this to you. Sushi. Saki. Sushi. Saki. Mmm. Sushi saka ha sake to me. I'll sake to you. Oh, feeling good. And you like that sushi food. Sushi food. Now you can say Sushi sake ha sushi go You sake to me I sake to your Oh feeling good And you know what sake do Now you can say Sushi sake ha sushi go You sake to me I sake to your Oh feeling good And you like that sushi food Now you can say Hey, hey, this guy's good. That's my favorite bit. That's my favorite bit. Hey, this guy's good. I've been saying that. I say it to the boys and they've not even seen the video yet. They will. I say it all the flipping time. Hey, this guy. I'm in college. There's no, there's no other guys there. They're all women. Hey, this guy's good. It was like, what? It's, it's, um, it's an advert for sushi. Don't worry about it, guys. Don't worry about it. Oh, Adam's, Adam's here. I'm a little bit nervous. Adam, when you join us, you're going to see a strange, strange shot of us because this is the way this is uh, this is set up. So you're going to see a strange shot, but it is us. <gasps> we see you. Can you hear us, Adam? <laughs> Adam, can you hear us? I can hear you. Yeah! <laughs> How are you doing, man? <laughs> I'm... I can hear you, yeah. I think you've got a delay. Are you listening to us on YouTube or are you listening to us on Zoom? I just shut off the YouTube. So Can you hear us um, now live and in yes. person? Yes. Beautiful. Right. Yeah. Um, um, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous meeting you because we have, <laughs> um, hopefully David's going to join us soon. Yeah, this is Adam who, di who directed this, right? We have been singing this, on stream, yeah. I think you've seen some of them. We've, we're, we're obsessed. We've sung this fifty times on stream. It's becoming a problem. I'm singing it. <laughs> I'm singing it to my kids. I'm singing it walking around the house, walking to the shops, and I don't know. It, oh, hang on, I've just got to move this. It's because we're streaming it. I don't, I'm. I wouldn't be totally surprised if you came on and went. The reason I'm here is to ask you to please stop singing <laughs> my. <laughs> stop singing my song. Um, Dave is joining us. Hey, Dave. Or David. Dave? Yeah, Dave. Dave, is, Dave, click your camera button. Come on, <laughs> man. Oh, imagine. Oh, God. If he had the hat and the beard on, I would I would die. You mean it was not he a looked, real beard? He looked for it. He looked for <laughs> Did it. he look for it? <laughs> Dave, turn your camera on. I want to see that beautiful, clean-shaven face. <laughs> Uh, there is a 10 hour loop of you know, you're aware Adam there's a 10 hour loop of that video on YouTube as well. I thought it was 2 hours but Oh, it's, it's only 10. 2 hours. Okay. <laughs> um Dave, if you get to turn your camera on that would be awesome, but can you hear us? I'm going to take that as a no. no. I don't think he can. No. We'll wait for Dave to join us. Uh, let's talk to Adam. Adam, it's so lovely to meet you. You and I Well, here's the thing. My friend David Turner's shared this video yeah. and he sent it to me and i was like oh my god we're gonna do a whole show on that i think he sent his hey adam me. where's the the camera button <laughs> <laughs> yeah adam you sort it out with dave we're in no rush but on the I'm bottom pressing, left I'm pressing of your it, screen it's like a little there's like a little white icon but nothing is happening when i press it just touch your screen on the bottom left of your screen there's like a little camera if it if it the red line goes away, then we'll see you. David is uh, a very smart at many things. Technology is <laughs> not one of them. Hey, this guy's not so good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave. Dave, you can do it, man. We believe in you, brother. Dave. Uh, Dave, Dave, you, is Dave doing a thing? Maybe I have it set up wrong because there's no like little red icon to push. 
Yeah, I mean, we don't we don't need to see you. We can just um, I'll try and superimpose a picture of. We'll just imagine you. We'll just imagine you, Dave. Can you hear us? Okay. Oh Jesus! I think we lost Dave. Is he winding us up though? <laughs> Hang on! Yes! 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 There he is! We got a Dave. There we got Dave on the side on the side. <laughs> Hey, Dave. I told him to steady his camera, but Dave, you might have to turn it vertically. What's that? Turn your turn your camera the other way. I guess it doesn't. The other way? It doesn't. Yeah. There Dave is already my favorite favorite person. Dave, can you hear us? <laughs> I can sort of. <laughs> That'll do. I'm gonna try to find another place. Okay. Where are you, man? I'm at work. Oh, okay. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> it's all good. Now I can hear you better. Beautiful. Right. right. Let us introduce. So we've got Adam, who is the director of the Sushi Saki Hot video. We've got Dave, who is the star. He's the singer. And we got this because our friend David Turner sent it to us. Yeah, with the message, this is the best thing I've ever seen. Yeah. And so we we watched it and we obsessed about it and we and sang we, about we it. We learned the song. And we tried to hunt. Oh. <laughs> no, Dave. No. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> Let's be, we're laughing because Dave is like us. <laughs> this would be us if we hadn't started yeah, the show I've, early. I've Seen your uh, Windows seen 11 challenges. Oh my God. <laughs> he came in, he thought, he saw I was streaming and he came in to watch it thinking, oh, I'll see what the show is like. But it was a technical one. Well, no. So it was a lot of swearing. <laughs> so we, and then we thought, right, we've got to, tr there was no information about that video on the, on the internet. So we hunted you down and we put a post. Can anyone find this? Our friend Lino said within minutes, I think I found the director on LinkedIn. I signed up to LinkedIn. <laughs> <laughs> with like a blank profile, messaged Adam and said, Adam, sorry to interrupt but disturb you. This is a really weird question. Um, you're not the Sushi Saki <laughs> hot guy. <laughs> um, what did you think when you got that message, Adam? Um, <laughs> uh, I thought it was a prank. I thought it was a prank. I thought it was a prank and... Um, I, I I didn't understand. I mean, this is like 16 years ago that we yeah. made this thing, and and so uh, I thought it was a joke at first, and then uh, and then I thought maybe this guy's serious, and then I was like, who? Why does he want to know this? Like, who is this guy? Why does he care? I mean, I've done a lot of films and stuff, so I yeah, I was like, why this one? And uh, and. And anyway, so I, I think I wrote you back and just yeah. saying, like, wh why do you want to? I am that guy. Who are you? And why do you care? And <laughs> what's this all about? <laughs> I was a little reluctant to admit that I was that guy because I didn't know who the heck was asking. I was, maybe it, was, it was the tax man. I was <laughs> expecting a, um, yeah, it's me, but go away. And But you, you were so lovely. You were so um, polite. And um, once you realized I was legit, um, you were so kind and, um, I'm so, I'm kind of nervous to talk to you because this has been such a huge <laughs> thing. This is the first time I've spoken to Dave. Dave, nice to meet you. Well, all right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> could, could you say, Hey, this guy's good. <laughs> <laughs> Does, so, who wants to tell me what the hell this thing is? Cause there are still people watching this right now. Mm -hmm. And I hate to break it to you guys. It's a real sushi place. It's not a real advert. Who wants to tell us the story about it? I mean, I'll I let can, Dave, I let Dave do that. Um, so I just had a strange idea. I just like the clashing of cultures type situation. And I kind of wanted to, this is before I actually went to like a screenwriting academy or anything. So I'm just like, I'm just going to write a bunch of stuff down. So this wasn't even like a formal screenplay. I literally just wrote scripts like, you know, BT Donovan slash dialogue, Jumpin' Johnny slash dialogue. And eventually, and Adam and I had known each other forever. And so I gave it to him and he added his bits and stuff and put it into the, the proper format. But honestly, I just thought it would be funny to have a sushi place, a 
spokesperson that was completely opposite of that, which is like some Leon Redbone, Hank Williams Jr. type character, kind of that deal. And then I just it just went from there. It kind of went from the uh, the cable salesman's perspective, and yeah. And then let me explain because this is from how long is it? About sixty minutes. The about movie. 40 it's about forty like minutes. Forty, forty minutes. It's a yeah. short film. We've both seen it. It is funny, man, and it's. Adam, do you want to tell us what the whole film is about? Because it's so, it's so delicious. It's lovely. Well, I mean, to Dave's credit, I mean, like Dave said, first of all, we've known each other a really long time since we were probably twelve or thirteen or something like that, and um, we both have a love of bizarre comedy. I don't, I don't think our comedies sense of comedy is like completely uh, aligned, but we find a lot of the same things very funny. So when we combine it, it turns into something sort of out of both of our control. I, you know, I, I can't explain it, but it's really funny. We make each other other laugh. I've never laughed harder than I have with this man. Yeah. And so uh, I think sitting, <laughs> sitting and talking about this idea that he had, um, I said, we need to turn this into a script. And I owned a production company at the time. And um, my partner, a guy by the name of Brett Van Til, uh, he and I decided to gather together a group of people that we work with on pay projects. And this was done completely with no money whatsoever. I mean, I, you know, like a couple of cheeseburgers and some pats on the back, I think is what the budget was. <laughs> And but but anyway, so we turned it into this screenplay. But the story is about um, this. There's this. There are these people, and they work in radio, and they work in television, and locally, here in the states. I don't know about elsewhere, but how it works. But um, they go around in their local markets, and they sell advertising packages to keep themselves alive, to keep yeah. themselves on air. And so uh, my mom actually did that for a radio station that uh, my family owned wow. for a while as a kid, when I was a kid. And um, your family, sorry, and, your family owned a radio station. Yeah, yeah. What kind of yeah. station was it? That's the coolest thing. Uh, it was a <laughs> oh, hair. oh, Hank Williams. No heavy metal. Eighties hair, <laughs> hair metal. Yeah, that's all we played. No, round the clock. Poison. <laughs> Judas yeah. Priest. Judas Priest, all of that. Um, so it was, it was, um, anyway, so so we just, we found this character fascinating because they, they're trying to do so many jobs at once. Yeah. And they, they're kind of, no offense to anyone who does this, but they don't do the greatest jobs. And so like, they're the worst commercials on TV. And so we thought, why not combine that with, like one of the most bizarre things to advertise for. And so the story is about, it follows this cable, local cable TV salesman around on his sales journeys, on his sales calls. And he gets turned down and turned down. And then finally he gets somebody to say yes. And the people who say yes, barely speak English. They kind of get duped by him yeah. into creating this commercial in the first place. And then he has this grand idea to pair him up with like the most unlikely antithesis of what they stand for to represent them. And that's this character named Jumpin' Johnny Blues, which is played by Dave. <laughs> and, um, we, and it is like a, a Leon Redbone, Hank Williams Jr. combination kind of thing. And, and um, Dave wrote all the songs that are in it. We recorded them at my dad's recording studio. I do all the um, like the answering machine voice and the and the um, uh, motivational speaker voice. I do that and uh, all the other little things that you hear in the film that are details. You can do it. Now go and sell. Sorry, Dave, go on. <laughs> Let's not forget one thing. The ultimate goal was with the fake commercial was for that to be a real commercial. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So problem was, I think timing time wise, that's allotted for commercials. 
it was like what too long to actually yeah air. ran a little too long for an air for airtime right right because that led to some confusion for us didn't it because we couldn't work out whether it was real or not when well, we first had it and we tracked down the restaurant because it's a real it's a real restaurant it closed in about 2014 it's got three google reviews two of them are really yeah. good one of them's yeah. really bad and it says the owner sold me an air conditioning unit that didn't work and then wouldn't <laughs> refund me and so it gets one star but it was so it was a real it was a real restaurant and i think that's where the confusion comes from and, where people and, thought and it was the real best part the best part is is that the owner is actually playing himself right oh, that's right. the so real that's owner but the co-worker was an actor right. he in fact his name was like something really american and and Can he say, didn't have an accent one one bit you might think is funny for the lonesome cat character i don't know if you can call <laughs> yeah. lonesome oh, cat lonesome cat <laughs> um anyways he was just obviously an amazing asian american guy so we literally had to coach him to speak in broken English. Oh, and and we, we also we also had to have our makeup artists do a lot of extra work to like make his face look greasy. We actually added uh, blemishes on his skin, like zits and yeah. sores and things like that. Like, <laughs> and he had the hardest time keeping a straight face right. during the scenes that he was in. It was unbelievable. It's, it's such a funny film. It's lovely. There's some great lines. I, it's, I haven't seen it for a couple of weeks, but there's the bit where he goes, this guy, this salesman goes into all these different stores and he goes into a video store saying, you've got a great shop here. I could really do this. Can I see, speak to your man? He says, who are you? I'm the assistant manager. Can I speak to the manager? Oh, we don't have managers. We're all assistant managers. We're all assistant managers. He's like, what? <laughs> and that was team how, effort. I was howling at that. That yeah. was the first I wrote. It's, so it's. There were some really beautiful moments. The ones that made me laugh out loud today when I was watching it were when the guy who is the, the guy that's in the back of the van, who's living in the basement for free, not being paid. <laughs> right? But when they start filming, the favorite bit for me was when you were filming the commercial. They start filming the commercial. And they're panning down from the light. They're doing a close-up on the light. And may, you may be in this one, so watch out. Because you're in shot. <laughs> you're in the <laughs> shot. You're in the, the shot. And then when they're dancing past the ladder, should we move the ladder? We'll take it out in post. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. It's it's dumb. I think what is great is it was made on no budget. Yeah. And those adverts are made on no budget. So you kind of got... Why? Why did you do it? There's, there's a, there's a question for every artist. For why did you do it? For fun. For laugh. For yeah. laugh. <laughs> we just we need, wanted to make people laugh. We need That's more it. of that. That's why we're doing this shit. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. Go on. I said for laughs. Yeah. But to have fun and make a funny movie and hope others think it's funny too. But real quick, before I forget. Did you watch the Jumpin' Johnny outtakes about his ex-wives during the credits? Oh, shit, I think I stopped that? before them. I missed those. i got to go back. Oh, you got to watch the credit sequence. Oh, that's that's one of the funniest parts oh, of the whole thing. We'll go back to that. How did you come up with the character Jumpin' Johnny? Because it's just... There's, the, the first <laughs> the time you see... The bit in the toilet and he goes, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but when he's, the guy's selling it to the, the sushi... Well, I'll be damned. That was it. He's selling it. I know, just the guy. He's <laughs> dicking around in this club. How did you come up with that, man? Because that is a great character, and that's what makes that advert so funny. I, I mean, I don't, my, my, I don't, I honestly don't know. My, my mom is from Arkansas. That might help. Uh, <laughs> it, it was, it was just a funny country, weird, like jazzy, bluesy, like creole kind of character. And then I just already talked. <laughs> And <laughs> the laugh as well. Song too. I, I mean, I came up. Well, there's two things. The, his story song, obviously, I wrote about you know why he got his name Jumpin' Johnny Blues and all that stuff. But it's funny because the Sushi Saki Hot song, I later found out, and which if you've done research, you probably found out too. It's it was like a real song in the '70s. Yeah, yeah. But I didn't know it from that. I used to watch this movie called Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon. Right. And he had a scene where these these guys sing or they lip sync that song. But I'd kind of forgotten about it. And I was always it always kind of was one of those things in the back of your head. And then I thought, well, that would be like a goofy spoof of that song and change the lyrics would be really the funny 
part that we could use for the song and the commercial. It, 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 the film is delightful. Um, the, the, the advert is just, it's so hypnotic and it's so wonderful. Dave, can I ask, when Adam got in touch with you and said, there's this guy in Britain and he wants to interview us about the film, that silly film we made 16 years ago. What did you think when you heard that? I just thought it was funny. I'm like, really? Are you serious? <laughs> across, across the pond, they're laughing at Jumpin' Johnny now? <laughs> you really are. It, it was it, initially when Adam posted the actual commercial. Um, a lot of people, it, it, it was pretty. I mean, we had a lot of people, like some comedians that like posted on it. And it was the same thing that the, everyone was like, is this real? Mm. I mean, I hope this is real or I hope this is fake, you know, and I want people to obviously hope it's real that's that's the whole point and then it just hadn't thought about it i mean i have a couple dvds that people i work with and friends are like oh can i lend me that and they watch it and they love it and they you know have parties and all that uh, around it and do do all the the dialogue and stuff like that but it's just you know i kind of forgotten about it and i you know it's so it's just it, it was i was like really are you serious and then he like showed me a legitimate email right Watch no. He sent me a link to where you broke down the lyrics of the song. <laughs> oh my gosh! I watched. I we watched that. We watched that. That, and I showed that to our producer Brett Vantel as well. And he was like, "Well, finally, the song is getting the proper attention it deserves." The respect. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Forget, forget watching um, eight hours of the Beatles and get back. It's this two minutes that really needs to be uh, deconstructed. I, I had a few people, because I told a few people, I, you know, we, th these guys are coming on and the advert's fake. And a couple of them went, oh, that's a shame. I said, no, no, no. If anything, it makes it more beautiful because it's this thing is 15 16 years old it keeps coming up every two or three years it's one of those things it keeps coming back into the foreground and the fact that it isn't real but everyone believes it's real also, that makes it beautiful but it also is kind of real it's from well, a real place it's a real advert it, it's 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 a <laughs> lot of crossover going there i think it's beautiful the fact that it's from a movie yeah it's real oh. people applauding when someone brings them water to what? the table. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably, that, I think that's like the number one thing besides the song itself that's commented on in, in the, so I posted it on YouTube, I think before Google even bought YouTube. And um, so, and, and it kind of didn't go anywhere. And what was interesting was somebody pirated it from my YouTube channel and uh, or whatever it was called back then. But um, interestingly, uh, so he reached out to me the same way that you did uh, and said, I was doing some research and doing some Googling and, and at that time, like there were some articles and reviews about it and stuff like that online. And, and, uh, he found my name and he said, uh, are you the guy that created this? And is this real or is this fake? Cause I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and <laughs> I want to go to this place. And I'm like, I live in Grand Rapids, Michigan at the time I did. Um, and, and it turns out he was a, an employee of a good friend of mine oh, wow. and we had no idea, you know, of all the people in the world and we were just a few miles apart. So he goes by the name of Selowitz, I think on YouTube. Right. And his channel has the most views. It's like 90,000 or yeah. something. But anyway, he, he took it and I deleted mine. And then people started taking it off his and, and sharing it all, all over the place. How does it feel? I put this to both of you. How does it feel? You know, because we were talking, it pops up every two or three years. Oh, have you seen this? How does it feel having this thing that you did a long time ago that, you know, kind of goes viral yeah. every f few years? Well, nobody's dropping any Bitcoin in my Venmo, so... <laughs> No, it's great. It's a lot of fun. I'm glad you get to see it. I mean, we had so much fun making it. And the characters are so fun. And there's so many just dialogue that are absolute gems in the whole thing. So I love it when people, well, you're just talking about the actual commercial. Yeah. See, I, I always, I think of it as so much more than just the commercial, just because that's, 
you know, it, it's a whole short film. But the commercial just cracked me up. People, people see it and they still, like you were alluding to earlier, is this real or is this fake? So, <laughs> which I could be a fly on the wall every time someone comes across that and thinks that exactly that this is the work they'll ever made, or I don't know, you know what I mean. So <laughs> that brings me pleasure. That that makes it worth it. <laughs> but it's it's kind of it's Ali G. It's Nathan for you. It's that real thing of is this is this real? Is yeah. it a before that kind of stuff? It, it's also happened. It's also you watching it going. Are these guys in on it too, or do they think they're there for a real job, yeah. or what's going on? You know. Is there anywhere? Everyone in the chat is asking, and uh, <laughs> is there anywhere that people can see the movie? Uh, you know, they, I. I sent you that private link. Yeah. And, um, you know, what we'd like to do is make it available for people to, to watch. It's too long for YouTube. And, and at the time, you have to understand, like, when it was shot, like, the budget and, and, and all the things that dictated around how we shot it determined, like, the kind of camera that we used. Yeah. We used, like, really good lenses and stuff like that. but it was recorded on a, on a mini DV format. And so, wow. and then it was transferred to DVD. And so even though we use like Zeiss lenses and, and all this other good stuff to make it look nice, our director of photography, Brian Papirsky was, was very good and um, made it look good. And, but the thing is, is when you rip it from a DVD, it only, it's only like 420 P yeah. or something like that. It's really small. So I don't know like what the best viewing format would be, but um, I mean, you know, you have access to it. Uh, heck, I don't care. I mean, as long as Dave signs off on it, you can share it all you like. Well, first I mean, of all, you can put you you can put stuff that's forty minutes on YouTube now. It's it, you, it, that is doable if you wanted to. Would you be? I mean, would would you be cool if we did a screening with our fan our fans? Listen to me, what an idiot! Where did that come from? <laughs> if we did like a watch along on on stream, would that be cool with you guys? Or you know, it's your film. I don't want to tread in any copyright toes. I wouldn't have any problem with it, Dave. No, not at all. As long as you watch through the credits, <laughs> then yeah, we'll do that. you got to we'll watch that. the credits. And by the way, I you know there's some people that deserve some recognition. Do here. it, Joe Ander Joe Anderson, who played BT Donovan, the salesman. Yeah, he he deserves a lot of recognition, and also uh, he he did a lot of improv too, and so uh, so did Dave. And you know. Um, then all the people that just contributed their time out of our, our friendships, relationships, and, and love of the comedy, mm -hmm. you know, those people are extra special to us. Um, so to, to watch the credits is meaningful for us. Right. And we've got, I've got some family members in there, like the band that plays behind Dave in the movie, uh, in the bar scene, the trumpet player is my dad, and that's oh. my dad's band. And that's live. That's a live recording. <laughs> All right, that is beautiful. Right, right before the urinal scene. <laughs> um, now, what are you guys up to now, Adam? I know you're still making movies. Dave, are you still writing and making stuff? Not really. I wrote. I wrote after I went to to the uh, academy, uh, screenwriting academy here. I wrote two feature length screenplays, like on final draft, the whole deal, that are hilarious, and I entered them into. Um, they're both very, very unique. One could be very commercially sex, uh, successful, and that's called Red Hot Fever. The other one is basically a talk show full of all fake commercials I wrote to. These are feature length, and that's called The Nolan Flanagan Show. And so I entered those into some screen competitions and stuff and got great feedback and things along those lines. But, hey, you know, I have a couple teenagers and a wife, and life goes on. So... I wanted to make the Nolan Flanagan show really, really, really bad. That that uh, Dave wrote that screenplay, and I read that thing a couple times. And it, I mean, the host is fake. The guests are hilarious and totally made up and bizarre. All the commercial breaks, you know, the commercials are fake, so you get like the sushi sake hot kind of theme coming back in that way. And you like everything about it is genius, in my opinion. It, I mean, there's there's a commercial in it called Robot Tarzan, and it's a robot Tarzan. <laughs> so that, that's, just, that, that's set up like a, a movie commercial you see on TV and add for it. Yeah. So, you know, then, you know. Anyways, go ahead, Dave. No, well, you know, like Ben Stiller made that Tropic Thunder movie, and they kind of did. 
you know, the beginning of that, they kind of did what Dave wrote years yes. before years. Dave wrote years before that. And, um, you know, so in that it, it's kind of in that vein. Dave's a visionary. We And visionaries yeah. and, uh, um, you know, original people, they don't get the respect. They don't get the money. And that's outrageous. And that is the way it goes. We all know really, really talented people that never got the break or never got the money. And, you know, people that are not so great yeah. become, can sometimes become millionaires. And the, and the big thing, too, is the exposure, which we're sitting here thankful to you for exposing our, our comedy, our craft, you know. Yeah. So I think if, and usually exposure means the money and the resources, obviously. But with viral things like this, it just... It, it's it's really cool and it makes me really happy. I'm I'm thrilled, Dave. I really am thrilled. It's it's beautiful and it's brought us so much happiness. Adam, I know you're still working. You're still um, making stuff, aren't you? Yeah, I've been um, making. I've been in the film industry for 23 years now. And, um, I live in Colorado, but I I work around. Um, I'm a creative director and a producer for a production company based in Denver. And, um, but I, in about 2011, I went to work for a, for an agency and we only did, um, uh, like non-commercial work. And, um, I started doing a lot of really humanitarian based stuff. Yeah. Um, and I got really burned out on commercials and, you know, if, if, if it wasn't stuff like Sushi Saki Hot, like doing love of the craft kind of stuff, it, you know, it paid well, but it was like very unfulfilling. And so um, started getting involved in things that better people's lives to to be more fulfilling. And, and so the stuff I make isn't like commercially out there. And but, you know, I make a living doing it and it, it's worked out. And I'm still writing jokes about poop. <laughs> they never get old I'd be careful as well Adam I don't know if you've noticed but it turns out you've got Area 51 behind you there's some spooky shit don't going on do not open that door um, I got that there I, I bought that there as wow. a matter of fact yeah I've been Is, there a few times I slowed down to take pictures one time and I had uh, I don't like that. black SUVs come out Really? Did they, As, and did they, yeah. did they speak to you or did they just come out and intimidate no, you? No, they just sat like a few hundred yards on either side of my car. And I had my son who was like five at the time in my car and my dog. And then we just slow rolled into Roswell, New Mexico. And there's a, there's a UFO museum there that's hilarious. And uh, so we went into the UFO museum and they let dogs in and, and the black cars went away and we took pictures of us with the aliens behind us and stuff like that. <laughs> um, I want to thank you too. I think, is there anywhere you want to send people to go and have a look at? And is there, have you got any links or anything that you want people to go and check out either of you? No, I don't. Um, if, if you make this, if you can figure out a way for us to make this film available for people to watch and comment on, um, I would be completely interested in that. I think Dave would too. I think we'd just get a huge kick out of being able to let people see the whole thing. And I had a, a little bit of a struggle when you first contacted me to, to, uh, do I want to let the cat out of the box with yeah. this? Like, because Dave and I were getting such a big kick out of the fact that people for years thought this was a real commercial. And I felt like it might be time to let everybody know who cares, but that it's connected to something bigger that, that we both happen to love as well. And I think if you enjoy the commercial, you'll probably get just as many laughs out of the whole film. Um, but, you know, the song, today's credit, one thing about the song I'll say is we, Dave wrote the song and sang it to me a cappella. I think the first time I heard it and, and then I said, all right, well, let's, make this into you know how what do we do to make so there's this weird element to the song that doesn't match the character it doesn't match akasaka sushi it, do, it doesn't fit in anywhere it, yeah. it's it's and we use this casio keyboard it's like this big to get that do, 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 do beat and and then we put in um you know a drum loop 
and then the suck it to you and <laughs> you know those were all me and then dave sang the song in the jump johnny blues voice and, and then we but i wound up with hog <laughs> You can't do the voice without doing the face, and I love that. <laughs> say it and believe it. Say it and believe it. Did you say it? If you didn't say it, you don't believe it. Say it again, Dave. When we talk, we can't hear you. Go and do, do that one more time. Perform for us, please, monkey. <laughs> what did you say, Dave? Sow chicky chicky legs, sow chicky chicky legs, smut that fatty hog. <laughs> These are from the credit rolls. This is from the credit roll. So there, but I got to tell you too. There's, there's, there's something else. So there's two parts. I, I, I want to ask this question too, for the viewers' sake, if when they yeah. get a chance to watch this film, and then also for Dave's sake, I want him to be able to speak in on this. But I'll start and and I'll just say this: the two things about this whole film outside of the fact that people thought it was a real commercial. But if you watch the whole film and you watch the little commercial, two things that make me laugh the most in the whole film are, is the section where uh, BT Donovan is talking to the two sushi workers and he addresses the employee and asks him what his name is. And the owner nudges him, uh, like don't talk because he didn't want his employee to talk at all and he said they called him with and uh the employee the employee is real demure and you know we directed him to be that way but he looks down like this and he looks up a little bit and he says they call me lonesome cat <laughs> lonesome cat <laughs> and, and and so then B.T. Donovan has to say, oh, okay, and he tries to diffuse the moment and, and says, okay, all right, Mr. Lonesome Cat. <laughs> and that's, to me, that's like one of the funniest moments. And the other funniest moment in, in the whole thing, in my opinion, is at the very end, it says six months later, and you do this follow-up with every character yeah. as yeah. like what happened to their lives after this Wonderful commercial, you know, supposedly changed everything for them. And um, BT Donovan is doing his sales pitch again, but he's in this like upscale uh, steakhouse restaurant and he's trying to talk to these very stoic characters who were having the hardest time keeping it together while we were filming it. And I was too. I think I ruined like eight takes just by laughing so hard. But, um, but you can see that in the credit roll, some of the outtakes from this too. But he introduces this character called Mr. Squeaky, the recorder playing clown. And that's also Dave. <laughs> Is it? Look at Dave's and little he, face. Look at him. He was only like the third go at it song. where I realized you were playing the circus theme. I was like, the first time I couldn't work out what it was. <laughs> he, he, he just plays nonsense. He just plays nonsense on the recorder. But he sings this song. Tell him what the words are, Dave. <laughs> Tell him what Dude. the words are. Did you all see that bit at the end? Yeah. You saw Mr. Squeaky, the recorder playing clown? Yeah. What are the words? Um, we, let me think if I can remember them. I take it apart. Chop up a steak and put it on a platter. My recorder, sing, what is it? We, we, I, chop we, up a steak and put it on a platter. No, some, some, my no, recorder, no, no, no. Familiar to the base steak in town. Now that's great food. Something like that. <laughs> anyway, so then BT Donovan says, says, no, 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 all right, let's, he knows this, he knows, and then he plays, you know, nonsense. And and he's like, no, 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 all right, let's, let's do this again. He knows this, he's got this, he's got this. Oh, and Mr. Squeaky does that, and, and then all of a sudden, Where he starts to go, oh, he, he, the, the song opens up with, I take it apart and put it back together, referring to the recorder itself. So, like, like what why does that matter you know <laughs> like why is that a lyric in the song why would you make that a lyric <laughs> so then, um you guys and then have he just no just the flute part and then he plays the flute part again this is, we're having fun <laughs> 
<laughs> if you two do not make a sequel, I will, I will be furious. This, this, uh, whatever we can do to make this happen, I, I want to be in it. We want to be in it. Yeah. And you've got, I, we've got us, we've got to get the characters back. Come on. I know, Adam, I know you're doing good stuff for the planet and all of that, but this is more important right now. The world needs a laugh. Yeah. You know, you know, we rang the Trump Tower That's and true. sang this to them, right? Oh, yeah. We sang it to I Trump Tower. That. Yeah. I, I saw the White House didn't answer your call, no. but uh, no. Trump, Trump's employees did. And uh, what was it? Another sushi restaurant did, I think. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I actually had lunch at a sushi restaurant. I was thinking about you the other day. I, I had a lunch at Uka Sushi the other day here in Colorado and was thinking about, I'm going to be on this show talking about sushi for some strange re <laughs> twist of fate. Um, what I would say is, you know, if there's people out there with uh, that want to bankroll a sequel, we're up for it. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. GoFundMe is the way forward these days. Maybe there's something in that. I would love it. I would love to see you two work. Look at Dave's cheeky little face. Look at that little smile. I want to see that on screen He's again. He's already making up the songs. <laughs> <laughs> um, gentle, uh, listen, uh, uh, Adam. We, I can talk. We, we, there'll be a way of getting it up on YouTube if you want. If it's on my channel or if, if it's on your, there'll be a way of doing it. We'll, we'll find a way. And if if that's what you want to do, um, it's so nice we'll, to we'll meet. Do it. We'll we'll do it with you uh, in in the UK. We'll make a UK version. It'll be hysterical. Oh, we're in. Totally want to be uh, in it. Um, thank you so oh, much for. We can do one for Indian food. There we go. Yes, no, we, we're had, not doing I've the accent, in, though. I've had Indian food in Piccadilly Circus, so I, I know just the place. We're not doing the accent, because that will get us in terrible trouble. Um, that's, that's why we do the accent. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that face. He's so naughty. Thank you so much for making us laugh. Thank you so much. It's really needed at the moment. It's a shit show over in this country. Yeah. <laughs> and um, you've, you've, you've really entertained us and everyone who's watching. And, um, you know, that's a tough thing to do these days. So thank you so much, Dave. Thank you, Adam. It's so lovely to meet both of you. We really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for having us on. And uh, thanks for taking an interest. And thanks to all the people who have commented. I haven't seen it, but it's pretty cool. Thank you, guys. We'll speak again soon. Take care. Take Stay care. safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Right. Yeah. Bye -bye. Hey, those guys were good. <laughs> this guy's good. <laughs> Standing next to this guy in the urinal, he goes, hot damn. <laughs> we, uh, we'll find a way of doing the screening. Maybe we'll upload it to my YouTube. If, we'll see what um, those guys think. But we will definitely have a screening of it. It's a really lovely little low-budget movie. It's got some really great lines in it. Um, it's just you, silly. You'd love it. It's really, really silly. 